Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning and welcome to this morning's workout. I'm just going to let the cat out and we're going to get started. Sorry for getting in a little late. There's no internet in the house. Oh my God. Okay, so just imagine if that were to go out. All right, Charlie, you want to go out? I'm just going to get the bike ready. Okay. And also, I couldn't find my shoes this morning because I went for a ride on Saturday. And I took them off and they went upstairs. And anyways, so. So I'm not sure what's going on with the internet, but I had to go off our Wi-Fi at home and go onto the internet. So, all right, so this morning, I'm gonna have to put on my brace here. Um, why? Has anybody ever torn their finger here, their UCL? Like, I had a ski accident and I literally fell like this and ripped my finger back. And therefore, this is like a little brace to hold it in place. And I notice that when I ride, it hurts a lot. So, all right, so I've got my E shot. Yay, cheers. And unfortunately, so we're going to listen to in our warm up. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to warm up for 10 minutes with Lori. And then we're going to get into three, um, seven minute hill climbs. Okay. So three of those. So a total of 21 minutes with about four minutes in between. Um, and we're going to talk about pedal stroke. So I'm going to make sure that you can really see my feet because that's what's going to be important. And uh, we're just going to get rolling. It was a good podcast from last week anyways. Failing is progressive. Check. <sighs> Cats are all awake. Just gonna warm up here. Are you with me? We're gonna here listen we go. and then we're gonna get into our workout. So it's so important to have a so good warm up and not just get into you know some accelerations right away. Right, we're all busy. But if you don't do this, it's almost like you get more overwhelmed Cheers. because we forget that we are in control of our lives. Yes, that is a hard fact. We're in control of our lives, guys. <laughs> there are times where I'm like, I don't feel like I'm in control. And then I'm in the realization that I said yes to all the things that are on my plate. And it's full. So I want to remind you that I am gearing up for the Bliss Project right now. It is pretty much getting to be your last chance to snag your ticket. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, this lineup of speakers is going to rock your world. Not only that, you're going to meet your tribe that you get to move forward with and I know that connection is the missing piece to self-development. You can self-develop yourself to death in isolation and you won't move forward until you find that tribe and connection. You kind of hit this the last it's feeling because true. a lot of your answers are inside of other people, meaning they help you unlock what's already inside of you, but they are going to um, really help uh, give you perspective on some different things in your life. 
it's not that you're not complete as is, it's that I really do believe that other people help unlock parts of us that we can't unlock on our own. So that's why you need to get there. The Bliss Project.info, you guys. I can't wait to see you there. So I was just watching Great. this uh, piece on Mel Robbins instagram it's on her igtv and it talks about how uh women are going to get paid and it really blew my mind because it's what chris and i talk about all the time but she put it in such an eloquent way and she was talking about visibility and Hope you guys had a this great resonated weekend. so much because i think about when i was really trying to get my message out in the world and when i was uh trying to move forward on my dreams and I was feeling like I wasn't being seen by people I still had this idea that I was going to be chosen by someone whether it was you know the fitness magazine editors that I wanted to be seen by or whether it was publishers in my life that I wanted to be seen by or whether it was these different influencers that I wanted to be recognized by and in their group and what I didn't realize that was is that, yes, I was doing all of these different things in my life and creating community and trying so to get out there, but I wasn't as visible. I wasn't making myself as visible while doing these things in order to just get the recognition myself. And she says, Mel Robin says in this IGTV, I hope that you go and watch it. It's just on her Instagram. Um, and I'm obsessed with Mel Robbins, so if you don't know who she is, I just gave you a little gift because <laughs> she's freaking amazing. Um, she talks about how women who end up speaking up and sitting front row and giving their input and being seen and making sure the things that you're doing are visible no matter what you're doing, even if it feels like you are just like, look at me, look at me, they're the ones that get the attention. They're the ones who are going to get paid. And they're the ones who are being seen and used in the things that you want to be used for. And I didn't understand this until I really understood that people are, you know, whether people want to book different people on stage, whether people want to book people on podcasts, you guys, this is all a, it's not only getting out there, but it's also a business. So whenever people are looking to collaborate with people, they really are looking for an equal energy exchange. See a couple little jumps. Let's talk about getting people booked for uh, the Bliss Project. It's not only about getting amazing stories on stage, but I also have seats in that auditorium that I, I need to fill because talking to an empty room with amazing speakers or with incredible stories is still talking to an empty room. So there's two parts. There's always the part where I have this sole mission of getting it out in the world, of course, but you have to support that sole mission by saying, okay, who's going to also support this room? Who has an audience that they're already talking to? Who already has a message that is very visible so people know to show up in this room and they want to go and see it? So it is your responsibility to make sure you're visible. And if you're like, well, I don't have this big audience. I don't even know what that looks like yet. Visibility starts by you speaking up and going into the rooms where you can take that front row seat. Um, this goes right down to when I go to Soul Cycle. It took me about three months to realize that I wanted to be in that front row in order to get to know people in the room and show up as a leader. Because everywhere in my life, I want to show up as a leader. And I want to be held accountable to showing up as a leader. Because I have so many days where I do not want to. But because I make sure I hold myself accountable, whether it's front row seat and soul cycle, whether it's going to an event and trying to sit towards the front no matter what, whether it's going to Tony Robbins and making sure that I buy the VIP because it's extra and I know who's sitting in the VIP section, meaning it's people that I want to connect with who are taking this serious. I have a very different experience of sitting at events in the front row or not even VIP, but up closer and then sitting in the back row. It's a very different experience. It's people on their phones in the back. It's usually people who are not really paying attention. It's people who are passively learning. It's people who don't want to be visible yet. I want to be in the front row. Even when I don't feel like I'm worthy of it, I go up there because that's how you get yourself visible. That's how you get into the state of saying, okay, I may not feel worth it yet, or I may not feel like I even, you know, could fit in with these people, or I maybe not even can afford this seat, but I'm sitting here mm -hmm. because I know that this is where magic happens, and way in the back, and I guess that sometimes we have to sit in the back, believe me, I've been there, whether it's been because you're sick, or whether you're with your friend who has a baby, or you've just had a baby, we have the times in our life where we have to take that seat, but whenever you can, 
make yourself visible? What are you doing to get out in the world to be seen, to be heard? Are you standing up when people ask opinions? Are you giving your opinion even if you fear it's going to sound stupid? Do you know how many times I've stood up and been like, oh my God, why did you just say that? But then someone comes up to me afterward and they go, hey, I really liked when you said X, Y, and Z. Or, hey, I didn't even realize you were in this group until you stood up. Or, that's so cool that you do what you do. I'm so glad that you said that because I wouldn't have known and I have this thing that I would like to connect you with. If you don't speak, it's not going to happen. Use your voice. Say the thing. Let it be okay if it was wrong. Have massive grace for yourself. Speak up. Be visible. Sit in the front row. Stand up whenever you can. Give your opinion. You guys, this is vital. You have a voice and you have to use it. And if you want to be heard, you have to keep standing up. Stand for something. Stand for something. I'm so proud of you guys. I know that this is going to... Um, give you that little nudge that you needed just to give the input in that meeting even if it feels like you said the stupidest thing ever let that be okay that's where we all start and that's where we begin I can't tell you how many times I've sat down and been like are you kidding me right now did you say that and then I just say Lori have grace have forgiveness you're using your voice it's better than being quiet you can handle it you can handle if you said something stupid you can like that's okay I believe saying something is better than saying nothing and then learning from it because you don't learn from nothing. You don't learn from nothing. At least you learn from the failures and you move forward. Failure is actually progress, you guys. Do you understand this? Like, actually failing is moving you more forward than not doing anything at all. Failure is progress. Get that in your head right now. Failing is progressive because it means you're taking action. So go get out there and start speaking up. It feels so good to feel acknowledged and seen in the world, you guys. You must do this for your message, for your voice, and for the woman who is not yet ready to use her voice. She's waiting to see you. Go get visible. I feel like it's the Olivia Newton-John song. Go get visible, visible. I want to get visible. Let's get visible, not invisible. Okay, so I love you guys so much. Um, I'm on a little bit of day quill. I'm on a day quill roll right now. (laughs) And I like it. I think it added a little spice to this uh, morning episode. So I'm sending you so much love. I want to know how you're going to get visible today. And uh, make sure that you put it on Instagram so I can know. What is your visibility action that you took today so that you can get out in the world? Tag me, tag the podcast, share this with a friend who is afraid of failing, even though it's progress. Okay, let's do it, ladies. We got this. And I want to see you at the Bliss Project. It's going to rock your world. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with me on the Earn Your Happy podcast. That was awesome, even second time around, because, you know, when was the last time you went to an event and you sat at the back of the room. I always try and get as close as I can, but usually I'm with a huge group. But I like what she said, it's like, cause you always have options to get to the front, whether it is paying a VIP ticket, but the people you want to be with are at the front of the room. And I like that because they're the ones that are engaged, they're not on their phones. And those are the ones you want to connect and network with. I love that. So the next time I get, <laughs> the next time we all get an opportunity to go to an event, right? Take that opportunity to sit at the front. Okay. So now we're going to get into Tabata. We're going to take 10 seconds. So a couple of things that we're going to work through on our first uh, seven minute climb is I'm going to go through the pedal stroke efficiency. Okay. So what does that mean? That means <laughs> make it, that means becoming 24, 20% more efficient on your hills. Okay, so that means changing it up. There are four different pedal strokes, eight different ways, 16 different styles. Okay, so I'm going to run through those, and then I want you to think about them on the next two seven-minute climbs. Okay, so... If you can, and then what I'll do is I'll put a link 
to one of my videos, um, explanation video, so it really breaks it down, but not on the bike. And you can go through that. So it's actually a three part, so part one, two, and three. And I'm gonna put them together, but anyways, they're like seven minutes each. So let's get started. Let's play it, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's get into a heavy gear. Alright, so this is basically a kit down to six minutes. So you want to be on the big ring, heaviest gear. Alright. So it's gonna be a bit louder. We're not looking for fast cadence. You're probably, if you're following it, um, most likely around 50, I'm guessing maybe 40 right now. That's how fast, how many pedal strokes you're doing per minute. So, we got six minutes here. You wanna relax the shoulders. Bring the elbows down, arms straight, right? You don't want to be bending your elbows, uh, bending your wrists. That causes your hands to fall asleep. So you want to keep it nice and straight. All right, so let's break it down. So watch my left leg, okay? So it's going to be like a clock. So we're going forward, we're going from 11 to 2, so kicking this way, driving the knees, so toe to the end, boom, boom, boom. you know if you somebody, you like knee somebody in the stomach, alright, so that's the first one off the top, the next one is power down, boom, boom, Ooh, ooh. Everybody's got that, mashing the pedals basically. So we're powering down, stretching those heels down, power from your knees to the balls of your feet. So important. If you're a runner, you tend to point your toes like this, I implore you to start stretching the back. It hurts, I know, but you're going to benefit it, you're going to stretch those calves and those Achilles out, you're going to be so much faster and stronger. Okay? So we got the power down. Now the sweep, or scraping of the mud off your shoes. So that's the bottom. So it's like four to seven on your clock. So you're pulling, physically pulling those pedals, heels hitting the back of your shoes. Both legs, right? Not just the right. Both legs. And now you're pulling up. So this is the one everybody's got the hardest time with because it's so new and never used. So you're pulling from six to 12. You're really using the hamstring and the glutes and your feet are hitting the top of your shoe. Okay? So pull up. Head up. Okay, now kick forward. Kick, 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 kick. Power down. Power, power, power. Sweep. Pull, pull, pull. Now up. Pull up on those. Up, up, up. So you should feel the different quadrants of your leg muscles being used. And that's so important because. When you're on your hill climb, you don't want to be just powering down and burning out your quads, right? These guys. You want to flip it through, back to front. So you start pulling back and you let these guys have a rest. So pull back, 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 
kick forward, kicking, 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 power down, 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 sweet, pulling back, up, good, alright, got a couple minutes left, let's just get into the groove, I want you to go through all four of those, both legs, right? Got two minutes left. So sweep. Drop the heels and pull. Scraping the mud off your shoe. Now pull up. Really engage those glutes, those hamstrings. Kick forward. Power down. Power. Power. Sweeping. Dropping those heels and pulling on those pedals. Awesome. Up. Kick. Power down. Sweep. So you can almost uh, hear the change in my pedals. Pulling up. Engaging those hamstrings. Kick. Alright. One minute left. Power down. Sweep. Pull. Power down, sweep, and pull. 30 seconds. Twenty-five. I know this stuff ain't glamorous, but It'll make you 20% faster. How fun is that? Five, three, two, one. Change it up. Recovery. Nice, fast. So those are things you're not going to get ever on Swift or Peloton. You have to pat, you have to practice those. Those are the keys to being fast and strong, efficient, and just really killing it on those hills and those races. If you participate on those, I don't. I haven't tried it yet. Slowly breaking down to give in. It's kind of like when Facebook showed up around 2007. I fought it for a while and I should have jumped on board a lot faster. Would have built my business, so maybe this is another thing that I should do. Um, all right, so this is the recovery, right? Flushing the lactic acid out of your legs means super easy and fast cadence. Okay, so last thing you want to do is when you put out a hard effort is to just stop and go super slow. What that does is it builds the lactic acid and the red blood cells in your legs and it's very hard to keep going, right? Um, also, there's things like, you know, bonking. Bonking is, uh, is termed, you know, for, um, as for when you like truly run out of juice, like energy, food, like you have not been uh, managing yourself well. Um, we're not going to talk about that today, but 
hitting your lactic threshold and there's no turning back. That can happen. So you want to be really thinking about, you know, how far you can push yourself without hitting that hill. So it's like climbing up the hill and then turning back before I hit the top. Hit the top or just hit the top without going over the top. Over the top means you've hit your lactic threshold and that's it, like you're done. Like you've overextended yourself and there's no turning back. It's kind of like bonking. If you bonk, there's no turning back. You gotta wait a long time to recover. Have you ever had a friend bonk on a ride? Everybody stops, right? They stop, have to eat, fuel, rest. So hitting that lactic threshold is like hitting the top of the hill and going over and there's like no return. I've done that once. I'll never forget it. I knew it was happening. Um, all right, so we got 38 seconds to our next set. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move quickly on this, is we're gonna break up the legs, meaning when one's pushing, the other's pulling. When one's kicking, the other's sweeping. So they're not no longer working in unison together, like both pushing, sweeping, kicking, but you're, they're synergistically working, opposing each other, helping, okay? So let's get back on our big ring. Back to our heavy gear. Lower cadence. I want you to think about tightening that tummy, relaxing the shoulders, wrists straight, they're not bent like this. Okay, they're on the hoods, we're in the drops. But we're gonna start thinking about breaking up our pedals. Okay, so I'm gonna work from the left. So let's start. The left is kicking, the right is pulling back. Okay, so let's think about that. Do you, you hear the difference in the speed when you do that? When you get out of the, uh, this kind of grind, you start working together. So that's the left kicking forward and the right sweeping back. Okay, so let's think about the left powering down and the right pulling up. Ooh, that gets a little faster, right? You can feel the change in your pedal stroke. Because now, your legs are working opposing each other. Now let's, left is sweeping, dropping the heels, and the right is kicking forward. All right, left is pulling up, Right is pulling down. Awesome. Doesn't look like it doesn't look like anything, but you have to follow what I'm saying. Okay, and do the exercise. All right, so just take a break, lighten it a bit. We're gonna go through that again. Grab some water. You see how this drill is a bit different? Like, you're not gonna get this instruction on a program. You have to get it from a coach, okay? All right. Let's make sure those heels are down, feet are flat, okay? If you have a mirror in front of you, which you should, either in front or to the side, to look at your pedal stroke. Your toes should be, not pointing up, I should be able to see the pedal underneath my toe. I should see the pedal, looking in front. Okay, if I don't, then my toes are too pointed in the front. Okay, if you look at my feet. I'll crank those heels back. Yes, flexibility and strength. 
All right, let's run through that again. So, the right leg is the leader. Let's add back those gears. And it's gonna lead. Right is kicking, left is pulling. All right, power down. So right is pushing down, left is pulling. Good job. All right, right is sweeping, left is kicking off the top. Right, it's opposing, it's doing the opposing motion. All right, right is pulling up, left is pushing down. You hear the difference in the speed. It changes, right? All right, let's flip it through quickly. Right is kicking, left is sweeping. Right is pushing down, left is pulling up. So you can actually feel this quad working, that hamstring working, right? Right is sweeping, left is kicking. Right is pulling up, left is pushing down. All right. Take this last two minutes. Just think about it. Bring it together. On your hill. If you want to speed up on a hill, what are you going to do? Right? If you want to pass somebody on a hill, what are you going to do? If you want to keep up with a group on a hill, what are you going to do? Right? Minute and a half. I want you to flip through those puddle strokes that we just went through. Relax the shoulders. One minute. All right. Forty seconds. Relax the shoulders. Ten. Awesome. All right. Can you get the gears? Put the two knees here in the front. Spin it out. You get Kleenex. It's not like out on the road, I can just blow my nose. So, if you have any questions about that, like I said, I'll put a, a link to one of my videos I did um, explaining the pedal strokes. It's in like a, a classroom form, it's not on your bike, but really think about it. Um, think about the different quadrants. So the last, Hmm, might break it down to five minutes. 
Uh, the last five minutes or four minutes we're going to do, because I have to finish up at six, because um, I want you to really focus in on changing up your pedal stroke. So what I like to do when I'm on the bike is flip it up right to left. So what I mean is that this leg will do the pushing down, this leg will do the pulling up, and then I'll switch it. This leg will do the pushing down, and then this leg will do the pulling up. So I'll switch back and forth, right? Dominant lead leg, follower. Dominant lead leg, follower. And I'll flip it up, switch it up right and left as I'm going on my hill or in my fast ride or even against the wind, right? The wind can provide a ton of resistance and uh, it'd be quite painful, <laughs> more so than a hill because um, there's really no end, right? You got to carry out your ride and that's it. All right, everybody's awake. All right, got 90 seconds. So let's flip it into the big ring right now. Okay, and I want you to go the next three minutes. I just want you to think about putting those pedal strokes together. And then we're gonna cool down for a couple minutes. Starting right now, guys, 60 minutes. That's our first minute, and then we're gonna finish up with two, so for three, and then a cool down, okay? So, shoulders relaxed, elbows bent, arms straight, wrists straight. Think about your legs. Flip from front to back. Good job, keep going. So kicking, power down, sweeping, pull it up. All right, got two minutes left. Keep going, keep those shoulders relaxed. Change up those pedal strokes. You can physically hear the change. Forty seconds. Get, breathe in and breathe out. All right, three, two, one. 
Let's drop it, bring it down, and spin it out. Good job, everybody. Three minutes to six. So like I said, when you're on your tough climbs in your program, or you're doing swift, I don't think Peloton's the same, well maybe it is, but think about those pedal strokes. It's not a quick learn because Putting it to work outside over inside is a different story, obviously. However, it's important to have that knowledge because when you're starting to burn out, your legs, your quads are starting to build big time lactic acid. Now you have an arsenal of different pedal strokes you can put into place to keep you strong and getting to the top of that hill. So once you go from inside to outside, you gotta practice it and you gotta remember. So I have a 16 week program and it's a road cycling program and it's all about, well it's not all about this, but it's a lot about this. Because what I want for you at the end of the day, or my clients, is that they remember what to do when the time comes, right? Like they're climbing that hill, oh my god. And this is going to bring on efficiency and power and strength. 20% my friends, changing up your pedal stroke, your cadence. How many times have you climbed the hill and you're like, ooh, ooh. you know, you've maxed out on the granny gear, you have nothing left and you still got lots of hill. Nothing left in the tank or in the legs but got lots of hill. Or when you get to the top you decide to stop and rest. That's like the worst thing you could do because remember that's when all the red blood cells start pooling in your quads and they start feeling like lead blocks, you know like cement blocks. You want to flush, flush, flush. That's why as soon as you finish your hard effort, super fast gear, um, yeah, super fast gear, fast cadence, 90 to 100, flushing, you get back to your workout. All right, gang, amazing. Um, thanks for showing up. Thanks for being here. Um, and I hope you took something home. Um, to think about when you get and you join your group uh, for your ride on Swift or you like your trainer, uh, your Ironman training, um, whatever it is that you're doing, your training, or if you're even if it's just for s straight, um, you know, building of cardio you need to think about this. It doesn't matter what level you're at or what kind of bike you're on, okay? All bikes are the same. They got some gears, they got a front ring and a back ring, and they got two tires, and they go forward. So, with that, you know, it doesn't matter if you got your mountain bike. Mountain bike is even, ew. Even more, you know, even better to think about that because, you know, you tend to climb hills and they're fast little hills, and but mountain biking is all about like quick gearing too, hard to easy, hard to easy. I started mountain bike racing before I did road, and uh, I loved it. But the reality of my life, I can't do everything, and I'm not going to. Um, I like to focus in on one sport and get good at it. Um, so, but anyways, you can use it for anything. Got your hybrid, touring bike, but uh, with that, have an amazing Monday, Easter Monday. Hope you're relaxing, of course. Hope you've gotten into a good routine at home. Um, fit in your exercise 
first and foremost and um, everything else falls into place so have an amazing day and I will put that link above um, after I finish this and take care and see you on Wednesday oh and if you're gonna join me at 730 for some weight training we'll be back in the studio right here <laughs> take care